what he is doing hallelujah when you understand what God is doing you can be patient when you understand what God is doing you can be discerning when you understand what God is doing it fuels faith and it fuels gratitude God's goal for us is to make us objects of praise that your life becomes a a holistic capture of what God can do with a man who decides to be yielded your assignment is to know this and to cooperate with God this is why you are here tonight I taught you last week that your being here among other reasons is an expression of your commitment that you are still interested in the making process you are still interested in becoming evolving you are still interested in becoming that vessel that can host God's power and I pray for you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ that now that you have come here may that which God has in store for you tonight not pass you by in the name of Jesus Christ let those who are downcast tonight find hope let those who are sick tonight experience the miracle working power of Jesus let those who have been tied down by all kinds of satanic assaults this is the house of God may you experience the liberating power of the Spirit let those who have been victims of darkness the Bible says that was the true light that lighted upon every man when it is the true light every man can be a participant every man can be a recipient may his light rest upon your life in the name of Jesus God bless you welcome to church please be seated hallelujah never stop yielding yourself to the ministry of the Holy Spirit never stop yielding yourself to the ministry of his word your flesh your body may be tired fatigued especially on account of the vicissitudes of life and the reality of the times but you must have a determination before you the Bible says looking unto Jesus calls him the author and the finisher of our faith and the Bible mandates that we study that character who for the joy that was set before him there is always a joy that is set before every believer the Bible says he endured the cross and he despised the shame it says for our light afflictions it says which is but for a moment that it worketh in us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory that while we do not look at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal but the things that are unseen are eternal Romans 8 and verse 18 says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us so there is something God is doing in your life. It takes time oh, for God to build people. It takes time for that vessel of glory to emerge. Hallelujah. No matter how healthy a mother is, she does not get pregnant in one day and give birth to the child one day. Hallelujah. From the day they tell her, Madam, you are pregnant, she's still going to be patient. There is a time allotted for that pregnancy. That's how it is in the spirit you are carrying something that is heavy you are carrying something that is weighty there is a formation of Christ in you and it's taking a while there is a man of God that is evolving out of this sacrifice there is an intercessor that is evolving there is a financial apostle evolving a career giant evolving are we together yeah there is a prophet evolving there is an apostle evolving there is an exceptional uncommon leader evolving there is a general overseer evolving hmm. 
There is a sign and a wonder like you just prayed evolving. But the question is that are you patient enough to allow the Spirit of God finish what he's doing? Hallelujah. No matter how hungry you are, when they tell you the food is on fire, you wait. What do you do? You wait. You can roam around the wait, wait. By the time the cook is done, they package it beautifully and you have the luxury of eating to your fill. This is what the Spirit of God is doing. He's building something within your life. While that building is happening, you may not seem to have the kind of money you want. You may not seem to have the kind of influence you want. You may not even see prophecy manifest yet. Maybe the church may not be growing as, as, as you want it. Maybe the business may not be growing. Maybe your destiny will feel halted, stagnated. But don't, listen, don't give in to the temptation of Satan. Satan is a master of the sense realm. He knows that once you become sensual, you are in his domain. The Bible says to be spiritually minded. Hallelujah. It says for to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. The moment you reduce yourself to the level of carnality, you start calculating your destiny mathematically, calculating your destiny sociologically, it will not add up. And the end of it is that you will be discouraged and you may not immediately see the profit in serving God, the profit in living for Him. So my first charge for us tonight is that you must realize that the Holy Spirit is on a journey with you. You can choose to tell Him, I'm tired. Tired of church, tired of growth, tired of spirituality, tired of pressing in, tired of persistence. And because he is God, he will respect your will. At the point you become exhausted and you do not need his help or you're not interested in continuity, he will respect you. But with that privilege will come catastrophic consequences. It is better to not start the journey than to start and not arrive. Are we together? What good was it for the nation of Israel when they left Egypt and only two people among those who left entered the promised land? They would have as well just grown old and died in Egypt. We are not of them that draw back. When you set your hand on the plow, you obtain grace. Obtain grace. And when you become tired and weary, you don't go back. You cry for help. You know why the Holy Spirit is called a helper? There are two assignments of help. Number one, to make things possible. Number two, to make things easy. This is the assignment of help. Every time you call for help, it is because you want things to become possible and you want them to become easy. So if I'm to lift this alone, if I ask someone to come and help me, number one, it makes what was once impossible now become possible, then it makes it easy or easier. That's the assignment of the Holy Spirit. When you call on him as a helper, he comes to your life and guarantees that that which God has shown you must come to pass. And then number two, he eases the journey. He does that among many other ways by comforting you. He's called a comforter. He does that by restoring you. He restores my soul. Hallelujah. Make up your mind that you have begun this journey with the Holy Spirit and there is no going back until that glory manifests in you. Is God speaking to someone tonight? The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. Listen carefully. It says, and it doth not yet appear. My God, I pray that you believe this. That it doth not yet appear. You can count how many fruits come from a tree. But you cannot count how many trees will come from one fruit. The fruits that you find in a tree, no matter how many, they are countable. But you cannot count how many trees can come from a fruit. And that fruit is your life. The Spirit of God is walking, incubating possibilities. And you just allow that spiritual gestation period to be full. And you watch the sign and a wonder that you become. That you look at your former self and you cannot find it again. You are changed. 
change to a man of power change to a man of wisdom change to a man of courage are we together change to a man of light change to a man of wealth change to a man of grace when men look at your life, your life becomes an explanation to a question they have been asking God. That every time men ask God certain questions, he refers them to your life. Your life becomes an answer to many people's questions. When they look at you, you are grace embodied. Chapter 2, please. Joel chapter 2, beginning from verse 23. The latter reign. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he had given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain, even the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Reading to 27, as a result of that rain, the floor shall be full of wheat and the fat shall overflow with wine and with oil. And I will restore to you, still on account of that rain, the years that the locust had eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you. I like this. It says, and my people shall never be ashamed and my people shall never be ashamed final verse 27 and ye shall know by all of these evidences that i am in the midst of israel that i am the lord your god and none else and again he repeats my people shall never be ashamed we are in the days of his power settle this for a fact let it be distilled upon your spirit man that we are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. We are in the days of his power. We are in the days of strange revivals, strange awakenings, outpourings of the Spirit. Days where the power of God is ready to be on full display like never, like never before. The Bible says in Psalm 110, Psalm 110, 110, verse 3, I believe, it says, The people shall be willing in the days of thy power. The people shall be willing in the days of thy power. I have seen these formations, and right now, like droplets. It is beginning to amplify from Nigeria, parts of Africa, across Europe, you know, down west. The Spirit of God is moving with full force. As we begin to prepare to wrap up this church age, as we know, the Spirit of God knows that there is still much to be done. And there is an acceleration system in the spirit and that is coming through and outpouring there are end time anointings there are end time mantles there is a quickening that is happening to the saints like never before accelerated trainings by the spirit of god because of the urgency that is at hand so settle it for a fact that we're in the days of his power a day where we will see the manifest power of God in the midst of his people culminating to salvations, healings, territorial transformations like never before. And let me tell you the truth. The purpose of announcing this to you is to remind you that you are part of that army. If we are in the days of his power, then it's important for you to know that the power of God depends on how many vessels are willing and are aligned to be endued with that power. I said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. All through scripture and even from modern history, we see moments of awakenings, moments of outpourings, moments of signs and wonders where 
territories were literally held at a standstill because a few people individuals sometimes or groups of people who were able to align with the spirit they carried strange fires and they blazed that fire throughout their time throughout their cities are we to talk of the wealth revival or the Azusa Street revival or many that have come before us and now even in modern history men and women who shook nations history books are full of their exploits unfortunately some history did not do justice to the level and the extent of power that they carried we only know what history told us about them but we know for a shorty that with the kind of alignment that these men and women had towards God, they must have done greater than what history told us. And now there is a new page in the spirit that has been opened. It's time to write someone else's story because that book did not stop. That archive of wonder-walking miracle workers, that, that, that history book in the spirit, it was supposed to be a continuation the apostles wrote their own. The patriarchs wrote their own. Everyone, now the page is open for you. And my assignment tonight is to guide you and to help you see that in truth, we are in the days of his power. And there is a latter rain. A latter rain. A latter rain that is pouring upon the spirit, upon the nations, the inhabitants. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 15 the Bible says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high until the spirit like rain be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness a destiny that is as a wilderness a nation that is as a wilderness a family that is as a wilderness be counted for a fruitful field and a fruitful field be counted for a forest. Let me paint for you a little picture of what an outpouring looks like. Let me paint for you a picture of what a season of prophetic awakening looks like. Because for many of us, we do not have an idea what does it look like. How do I know that this is a season of outpouring? What does it look like? In agriculture, most of us know when the season of a harvest comes. You know how the crops look. You see how busy the farmers are. You also know how a planting season looks like. Those who are students, you know how it is when school resumes and you know how it is when there is holiday. So you can literally look at a picture and tell what season it is. When you see a school empty, without any word of knowledge, you just say they are most likely having holidays. When you see a lot of students, they most likely have resumed. You can look at the atmosphere and the spirit and you can tell with precision because there are events that follow the prophetic speakings of God. So let me paint for you a picture. What does it look like when God is moving? What does it look like when the spirit of God finds unrestrained access through a life, through a church, through a ministry, through a vision, through a family, through a destiny, through a business, through a territory? What does it look like? What does the move of God look like? What does a season of signs and wonders look like? What happens? Show me a picture of an individual who is experiencing a revival and an outpouring. If you do not have that picture, you will lose out on prophecy and lose out on seasons. It says the Lord was in this place and I knew not. What does a season of outpouring look like? Number one, the season of outpouring comes with a manifestation of mighty works. Mighty works in and through the saints. The season of outpouring is a season of mighty works. The season of the latter rain, when the Holy Ghost moves upon a people, it culminates to mighty works. It's a season of extraordinary manifestations. What does an outpouring look like? 
a season of greater influence where the church gains ascendance and their influence becomes incontestable even within their world not just from a spiritual standpoint that the church gains visibility like we find in Isaiah chapter 2 from verse 2 and 3 the Bible says it shall come to pass repeated also in Micah that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it I like verse 3 verse 3 says and many people not few Many people are not pouring. It's a, it's a season where multitudes are affected by the influence of the Spirit. It does not happen to a few. The training may be for a few, but an outpouring affects multitudes. In the day, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says 3,000 souls in one service came to Jesus. The season of the latter rain is a season of mighty works, not mighty discussions about works, doing exploits by the Spirit.